Hi, it's Ray Shaleen from Pro Shaper Sheet Metal in Charlton, Massachusetts. And today we've got a 1962 Jaguar E-Type right front fender. Now, have, uh, I'm going to start a series of building an E-Type nose in aluminum on YouTube. It's going to be uh, probably a 20 pot or so. But uh, I first needed to get a good example to copy. And I put out the word there, and uh, I got uh, a friend of mine, Dan, from Hilltop Jags in Hanover, Mass. He had a really pristine example. Uh, it was totally original, original paint on it. And earlier today, we stripped the paint off of it. And it has a few little dents. Uh, and I'm going to fix maybe just this one dent, showing how to use a, a shrinking disc. And uh, the idea is to get this all cleaned up very nice and I promised Dan that I would do that in exchange for being, letting me have the borrow this uh, very nice original piece and the only damage on this is this little crease bend here ran up against something a little dent and then there's a light little dent right here now there is some rust damage too they also they bolt up to the main center section of the front nose and water will accumulate down here so this edge has to be replaced eventually and then when they were making these back in 62 these are for uh, inner baffles for the uh, the wheel wells and they had a flange spot welded here like this one here I don't know if you can see that one we didn't take that one out. We took this flange out and there was a ton of uh, sandwich rust under it. And apparently Dan told me that the later ones, I don't know what year it is, they started gluing these in. So instead of spot welding them in, when we fix it, we'll probably glue in the new ones. So I was going to do those repairs for Dan for helping me out with uh, getting this nice panel to copy. So keep uh, watching for that on my YouTube channel. Um, it'll be building an all aluminum E-type nose. We'll be building that 060 aluminum. So right now we're going to be concerned with, we have took this flange out so we have backside access here. We got a dolly, we got a slapper, we got a hammer, and we've got a magic marker. And the magic marker I'm going to put on here just so you can see that crease bend and how the shrinking disc helps you straighten this out. So I'm putting the magic marker on and I like the magic marker as opposed to Dykem. I've got Dykem also. Everybody says, oh why don't you use Dykem? Well the problem is uh, Dykem uh, gunks up the surface of the shrinking disc so this doesn't. It acts as a lubricant and it also acts as an indicator. It actually dries faster too. The Dykem I usually have to use a uh, heat gun on it to cool it, to dry it up. This will dry pretty quick. So now I've got a little sanding block. It could be a file also. I just got some 150 sandpaper on here, stick it paper. And we'll just sand this. So that's acting like a guide coat. You can see now that we've got a low spot here, a low spot here, and these are high spots. This is actually caused by the swelling of the uh, rusted metal in between, the sandwich rust. And uh, I read somewhere that uh, sandwich rust can uh, create 17 times its original thickness, and it has a tremendous amount of strength. So it's almost like water cracking rocks. It'll, it'll make all kinds of problems on your sheet metal. So if you're doing any type of restoration that has spot welded pieces that are exposed to the weather, you're going to get this condition. Now this has a, a wired edge under here. There'll be some rust under there too, but uh, I don't think it's of any concern. So what I've done now is I've highlighted these spots. Now I'm going to bring them up. Now the beauty of the shrinking disc is I can take the dolly and I'll put it under here and this shrinking disc or the, uh, the slapper initially is going to bring those spots up. If I bring them up too far the shrinking disc will bring them right back. So I've got total control over the process. 
So right now, what's happened here is the metal is in the improper arrangement. The metal has been pushed in. There might be a little bit of, sh of stretching that happened here, which the shrinking disc will take out. This is definitely stretched here. That's from the sandwich rust. So we're going to take the dolly. We're going to put it in here like this. This is the fulcrum. This is the lever. You're going to hear me say that hundreds of times in my videos. Fulcrum and lever. Now every time you hit, if you've got your light behind you, you can see the little footprints and you can monitor where you've been. And this is a, just a, a low crown here and that fulcrum is just popping that metal up. It's popping it up because it's got a little point of contact and the slapper is hitting around it like this, forcing it over. So you're getting a little bit of arrangement and every time you actually get the little contact, you're getting a little contact or a compression stretch too. Uh, that stretching is not a factor because we will be able to use the shrinking disc to take that little subtle amount out. Now I switched it to get closer over here. This is a much lower crown. Go back to the little bit higher crown. So that uh, did a pretty good job right there. Just smooth a couple minutes to smooth it out. So now we're going to take the shrinking disc and we're going to rub the shrinking disc on there and see what that tells us. Now we're not necessarily going to be shrinking right at this moment. We're just finding uh, out where we're at. We've improved it greatly. And this will be verification of what we just did. So I'm bring that over to the end. may or may not have created a little heat. Now there's hardly any steam at all. Steam is all, all you really need to see. But there's a little bit of heat there. It's probably uh, 200 degrees probably. I don't think it went higher than that though. Yeah, what I'm cooling with is the uh, regular water with palm olive uh, dishwashing soap. I use that for a couple of reasons. One, it makes the water really wetter and two, when you rub your hand on it, it slides really nice and you can feel it really good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my little orbital sander and I'm going to sand that just like I did in, with the aluminum uh, repair video that I did a little while back, how to uh, take the dents out of the aluminum and shrink them up. So we still got a few little imperfections here. We're going to get those better. And I wouldn't use the torch on this at all. Where do you use the shrinking disc versus the torch? If this uh, was a vehicle that was running this, the winter time or something, and of course it wouldn't be front wheel drive, but say this was somebody put chains on the thing or, and, and there was big blisters here and it was really puffed out. Uh, generally the rule of thumb is that I only use the shrinking disc on steel now and I only use it if it's about a sixteenth of an inch high or less. If it's uh, more than a sixteenth of an inch then I'll torch shrink it which is a lot faster and then I finish it with the, the shrinking disc. The torch is the gross tool 
uh, does the, the bulk of the work. The shrinking disc is the subtle tool, great tool for doing this type of dent or this type of dent. It's little subtle dents, but it'll get uh, glass smooth. So for, I'm going to get the little sander now so we can erase this surface and start over again and find out exactly where we're at. All right, so I got my little Harbor Freight two-inch uh, detail sander here, and I'm going to just give this with uh, 80 grit. So there you can see it didn't uh, reach into the crease, bottom of the crease, and you can still see where that crease was because of the magic marker. Um, now I'm going to take the sanding block here without any marker on it, and I'm just going to sand this like this. Now I'm putting the sand scratches this way, so if the light is behind me, they will light up the area really good. So let me see if you can get that with your camera. Okay, now all my spots, the low spots, are all clearly defined for me. So I'm going to go in there. in this part of the dolly here to get closer. Okay. Now we'll hit that again with the shrinking disc. If you can see it, but that is getting really nicely and smooth now. Way? Yeah. And it's starting to get that uh, nice glass smooth appearance. So now what we'll do is we will magic marker it this time now. See what the magic marker says. Now we got it pretty nice, but there is just a tiny little bit of residue right along that deep crease that's still down a little bit. Um, with that much magic marker on there, it really doesn't 
uh, heat it up too much because it acts as a, so much as a lubricant. But it, what, what it will do is it will, sh again, highlight all those spots. So you can highlight the spots with the magic marker. You can highlight it with that little orbital sander. So you can switch back and forth, whatever works best. Now, there's still a little, the flow of the metal is supposed to be this nice graceful curve. And it's still impacted here, right along there, right along that scratch, where it's coming down a little bit. So there's a, you can feel it with your hand, there's a little uh, imperfection there. So I'm going to beat up on this on the back side a little bit. Bring that up. Plus, I'm going to compression stretch it a little bit along that crease line. Now my impacts, every time I hit it, I'm right on the dolly and my impacts, uh, I can see all the footprints. I got uh, really good control of the process. And it's all about the light quality. You have to have that light behind you to see it. Now, when you're hitting like this, I've mentioned this before when you're doing the aluminum, it's always the impulse to hit hard with the slapper and you're actually kind of rearranging the metal in. So you've got to be careful that you've got enough up force with your dolly, plus you're going to have to use the dolly to kind of pop it up a little bit here. So I'm getting verification twice. One, the noise. I know that I'm hitting the dolly. Two, I'm actually seeing all the little footprints right in the depressions, right where it should be. So now, if perchance I screw up uh, and I hit in a spot that I'm not supposed to, it'll overdevelop that spot and then that's where the shrinking disc comes in. So the shrinking disc is like the equalizer. It uh, will level the high spots, uh, will blend into the low spots and it equalizes out. That's feeling a lot better now. That I'm not getting that. I was getting a situation like this before. Now I've kind of popped it up a little bit and I got a nice flow going there. There's still a little depression right here I can see. So I see if I can sneak in there with the edge of the dolly. Now that dolly's not letting me get in close enough. So I'm gonna see if I can get another dolly to, to get really close to that edge. So now I have a dolly that has a little sharper edge here and allow me to get closer to that wide edge. So I'm gonna get in here. And I might not be able to do it. It looks like it's uh, hitting here and not right where that wide edge is. Let me give it one more shot. did it. That's good. I got a little bit more over here. I use the edge of the dolly here. I got a little rough with it there and it's popped up. The shrinking disc will bring it right down. So now Let's verify that. Let's see what we got. It's going to be a high spot right here. The rest of it should be much better. All right, we've still got a few spots here. Let's see if we can pull those up a little more. You can, they're barely perceptible. 
This, I believe, is, uh, we haven't really hit that hot enough. That's where the sandwich rust was puffing it up before. So let's pop this up a little bit here. Now we'll hit it with the disc again. Let's put this block of wood in here. That's good. You see, I got a little bit of heat over there. That's where I went a little strong. Let's see what we got now. Well, there's still a little bit of this here. It's flattened out a little bit right in here. So I gotta pop that up. I got some micro condition here. These are little tiny little lows we gotta bring up. But this is all looking good here. So let's hammer it a little bit more. Got that one up. Dolly to coax that up a little bit more here. And then I'll lightly slap it. Hit it with the sander again. That's feeling pretty nice. A little low spot right here I gotta get. I can feel a spot there.
That one I'm popping the dolly on the back side too, so I don't drive it in. Hit it with the marker again. This marker is wet. It leaves a nice shine too. And it looks like a gloss. You can really see the, the imperfections with the, just the marker. There's a low spot right there, I can see. One right here. Now I sanded it this way and I revealed all these little flaws here still. They're quite subtle. This is the worst right here. Way with that wired edge is a little trouble. So watch this now. Just hit it a little bit and you can see it correcting. This is all within the realm of primer now. Now all those spots that are sanded off, they will get the full attention of the shrinking disc. They will heat up more and they'll equalize out. So we did it again with the disc. That's looking pretty good right now. I'll look down there. It's nice and shiny. Feels pretty good. There's some micro stuff still 
um, but of nothing of any concern. So that shows you the process of taking dents out and it can take uh, 10, 15 minutes, maybe a half an hour or so for each one of these dents. Now I make these shrinking discs, I have been making them for 20 years. I am the inventor of the what's called the smooth and safe, it has a safe edge. Prior to this, uh, Scott Knight, a shaper from Southern California, he came out with, uh, in the early 80s, a, a disc with, with these ruffles on the edge and uh, they, they're pretty aggressive. And uh, once you use them for a while, they become like a serrated razor on the edge. Uh, so I thought there's a better way and I put this safe edge on which also strengthens them and I make them out of thicker material so they last a long time. You generally can get like five years out of one of these discs or more. So it's a wonderful tool. This is the nine inch. I also make a five inch. We'll get into the smaller areas. I generally use the nine inch for most areas. Um, if you're into a, a reverse curve or a little hollow or something, you can't get that in. That's where the five inch has its uh, best use. So here we have the finished product. It's pretty nice. Um, it still stand a little bit more micro denting. You could pick this up. You can spend another 10-15 minutes. Uh, this is be filled with primer. It depends on how fussy you want to be. Uh, I do have a couple other spots. I'm not going to do that in the video. And like I said, we're doing this because we're going to be making all aluminum E-type nose in probably a 20 pot series and that'll be starting uh, Thursday two days from now. We'll probably do uh, this fender or maybe the front nose section, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, it's Ray Shaleen, Pro Shaper Sheet Metal.